This viral video has sparked a debate on pink tax, a topic, a perception that was shoved under the carpet for too long. This video has been posted by advertising veteran Sanjay Arora and was reposted and shared on X by the executive chairperson of Biocon, Kiran Mazumdar Shaw. Today we are joined by a very, very special panel on a topic that has been buried globally and now resurfaced thanks to a video by Dr. Sanjay Arora, one of our panelists today. He is someone who's been in the field of advertising for decades and now has evoked a response on the idea of pink tax. Now, what is pink tax? While many believe that, look, it's just a markup on some products that are focused and marketed towards women and not essentially a tax per se, others feel that, look, it's gender-based price disparities that are known as pink taxes and must be shunned globally. Now, Kiran Mazumdar Shaw also responded to Dr. Sanjay Arora's video, said it's a shameful gender bias that women must respond to by shunning such products altogether. Now, to have this discussion and this debate, I have with me Mitali Nikor, Senior Economist, Sanjata Mukherjee, Senior Economist. And I'm going to begin by asking you, the women, really, is shunning products really the only solution? Thanks. Thanks a lot, Sakshi, for bringing me into this debate. I think, uh, you know, I'd like to, of course, thank Sanjay Ji for sharing this video because, you know, this is discrimination that women face every day. And I also want to point out that it took a man, an ally. I mean, I'm really respecting him for doing this, but a man and an ally to bring this to the fore. And it also reflects why men need to be allies for women. You know, when we are raising issues of gender disparity, it is only when both and rather all genders speak about that dis disparity and inequality that we can take it to, you know, this level that the discussion has gotten. Now on pink tax, you know, what is pink tax and why are we paying it? The, the root cause of it actually lies in gender discrimination and disparity itself. You know, at the end of the day, when you are in a free market economy and you are allowed to charge whatever you want, you know, for your products, for your services, if you're charging extra and women are paying extra for those products and services, it means that it is the result of a very long gender stereotyping campaign that is happening in society and then companies benefiting off of that campaign. You know, to say mm -hmm. that, oh, these gender stereotypes exist. Women love pink. Let's pink wash our products and make sure that, you know, they purchase that pink razor or that pink, you know, top or that, you know, anything that they, that they you know, that they market. But it's not limited to private sector. There's also the issue of public transport. In a recent study that we had done, we found that women in India, on average, are paying 35% more than men for public transport because they are not opting for public transport modes they are taking safer modes like taxis or you know autos which cost much more than public transport so mm -hmm. it's not limited to products and services by companies this is an inherent gender stereotype that's coming out across the board so sanjita i was saying the disparity is more prevalent in personal care products as per reports do you agree Yes, most definitely. And I really appreciate what Mitali also highlighted. Uh, it is definitely uh, pricing, differential pricing based on gender, which is discriminatory. Um, and what she mentioned, it's a free market uh, around the world. Uh, that's how capitalism works. And it is driven by a profit motive. So when exactly. we talk about discrimination at a broader level, yes, gender is one point. Uh, one can talk about different discrimination based on Say even age, uh, even even emotional uh, uh, catering to you know the advertising industry catering and pricing catering to age. Say for baby products which are super expensive around the world, uh, yeah. pet products which are super expensive around the world. So discrimination at all levels. But definitely, I mean, if you're buying the same shampoo and it is priced differently for a man than for a woman, it, it's a bit much, right? So uh, that's called the pink tax, essentially. It's a tax word is a little misleading because the government doesn't benefit from it. Uh, the corporate does. And in a free market economy, that's called the profit motive and why this is mm -hmm. done. Uh, but having said that, pink tax, I'm very happy that uh, these kind of reels and discussions are going viral and happening. And Kiran Mazumdar Shaw also highlighted it. It is actually very shameful because uh, think about it. I mean, in a country like India, where the income disparity is so huge and right now you know the government focus is actually uh, trying to focus a lot on women coming into the mainstream income stream you know, by providing lakpati didi self-help groups 
women entrepreneurship, uh, women products being coming into the market, helping them. You know, this kind of a pink tax by corporates is uh, very demeaning because it just uh, lessens the amount of money a woman might have saved to have to just to buy that shampoo. And typically, you know, their earnings are also not at par with men. Yes. So then it's it's a little bit of a strain on them. What can be Absolutely. done in India since 2017, the Ministry of Consumer Affairs have actually highlighted this as a guideline for corporates to take social responsibility and ensure there is no differential uh, gender pricing uh, based on this pink tax concept. I do not know whether that has been implemented in uh, spirit and law, but uh, there there is a mention of this in the Ministry of Consumer Affairs in 2017. All right. There's a mention of this, but the UN calling on nations to eliminate pink tax altogether, saying we must ensure that women have full and equal access to economic participation. As you both mentioned, the economic burden also coming on women who are often not earning at par than the male counterpart. Thank you so much, Dr. Sanjay, for joining us. You have, of course, put this topic back on the spotlight via your viral video. Share with us the fact that when, what first came to your mind, where did you shoot this video, when did you shoot this video, and what were your initial thoughts when you saw the, the lip balms to the plain white t-shirts, everything exactly the same, costing more for a woman? Actually, I was sensitized to this by my daughter. A few weeks ago, she mentioned something called the pink tax, which till then, honestly, I had not heard. And then I, it really piqued me. So I researched on it. And then I said, let me go out and figure this out. So I went out to a departmental store. And I, okay, the owner was a friend. And I asked him to give me products of both, which was same absolutely for the male as well as the female. And I compared the pricing, etc. And I could identify at least half a dozen products in five minutes, which had differential pricing. Mm -hmm. So this was clearly a discrimination. So we shot it right then and there. And uh, I never expected this to blow up like this. In fact, yesterday, a news uh, stream from uh, Spain got in touch with me. They wanted a bite to and a, this thing. So it's gone international. In fact, uh, internationally also, it's a huge problem. And of course, a lot of my people who follow me on Instagram, so that's where it went viral first and then Twitter. Uh, that's X now. So uh, they mentioned that there's something like a blue tax too for some, some products in the male category. And then someone <laughs> mentioned there's a... There's a parental tax, which, which is even steeper. All kids' yes. products are more expensive, much more expensive yes. for e than either females or so. I'm soon going to be doing something on that too. Well, of course, now with your viral video, the world will, of course, look forward to more information and the fact that more issues really need to come on the center. Yes, yes. And this state something a topic that was buried really under the carpet has now gained that spotlight like you said globally so Mitali to you even the terminology the pink tax the blue tax even the terminology many believe it's really time to tarnish that gender stereotype altogether your thoughts no absolutely Sachi. see we were discussing even before this call what could be the solutions to this and you know like Sanjita pointed out we have an advisory but an advisory in a free market where, you know, you are allowed to price what you want is it's only a guideline. And why will a profit maximizing company, you know, follow that guideline when they are trying to price their products? So if we actually have to bridge this, then we have to go into a regulatory, you know, scenario where companies are actually having to declare their cost of production and then saying that, you know, there is actually a rationale for this. I am pricing this X percent higher because it's costing me X percent higher to produce, right? Which is very difficult to monitor as well. And most, most countries around the world don't actually have any sort of regulation on this, even in Europe. And I'm, I'm so glad to hear that the Spanish, uh, you know, channel was in touch because even in Europe, which is a highly regulated market, Right. Most European markets put very strong regulations for environment, um, you know, supply chains. Where are you sourcing your products from? Even they have not been able to regulate on, you know, this gender based discriminating pricing. So therefore, if we want to actually bridge this gap, we have to go into the economics of actually product producing these products and finding an economic rationale. Right. Finding an economic rationale. Sanjita, what to your mind is the solution really to bridge this gap? No, absolutely. I'm completely with Mitali in terms of having audits on clear pricing. So there yes. should be transparent pricing in terms of how have you derived 
at this cost of the product, uh, which will be, I mean, it's it's all there in black and white and one can easily figure out if there's a component of pink tax or a pricing differential based on gender going into that. That's point number one. Point number two, you know, in today's date, uh, you know, human beings, we ourselves, consumer behavior itself is a product. Eventually, mm-hmm. we are also products. So uh, uh, free markets, corporates, they, uh, I mean, that's that's what they use. I mean, us as products uh, to cater to their products in the free yeah. market economy, right? So having said that, uh, uh, what needs to be discussed, at least I'm very proud of the fact that at least in financial service as an industry, when we talk about products uh, in India specifically, I mean, I'm not talking about consumer uh, goods right now. In financial services, you look at schemes like Sukanya Samriddhi, which is also a product, in which you're actually incentivizing. That is also a product. So these kind of good things, positive things also need to be spoken about. Corporates actually can step forward and design more women-centric products, uh, starting from their own. Uh, you know, Charity Begins at Home, uh, which will help women invest, uh, women consume in a more uh, authentic real and transparent manner so corporate responsibility needs to be there audit needs to be there customer advocacy engagement consumer groups need to be there uh, the consumer awareness needs to be there all of this needs to happen right so regulation corporate rules and a brainstorming really required so, uh, to tackle this uh, gender uh, stereotype uh, and tarnish this all together thank you so much for sharing your thoughts